and Jim, and welcome back to another Meteorology Monday. Today we are continuing our series called Storm Chasers Toolbox and we are giving you guys an inside look into the models and forecasting tools that we use before we hit the ground running, get in the car, throw everything in the back and uh, try to see tornadoes through all of the trees that are <laughs> encompassing all of North Carolina. And sometimes we throw everything into the back and then get into the car. So, you know, sometimes it's a little out of order, but <laughs> sometimes you know. we look at the, the models <laughs> and the radar in the car, you know, <laughs> interchange as you will. You know, we just, we jump in the car and we head in a direction. <laughs> it's, sometimes it's scientific, Always sometimes it's the coin flip method. Dad's favorite. Heads, we go north. Let's go. No, you always go south. Did you not watch our previous <laughs> vlog? Uh, there was the storm the other day. That was a tornado warned storm. We don't talk north. about that one. Okay. We both, we weren't able. Okay. Some of us have a bias. We weren't able to chase that day and he's upset about it. Some of us have a bias. I'm Head also south. upset about it. Okay. Anyways, we are talking today about models and forecasting tools and all of that. So without further ado, I'm gonna pull up my laptop. We're going to do some screen recording and we're gonna get all scientific professory here. Here we go. But before we go there, go ahead and like and subscribe. So we're gonna break it down into two parts. First part is what's currently going on. The second part is looking at the forecast. And that is what helps us determine where to go and when to do it. Number one in our observations category, recent observations, is the College of DuPage's GOES, what is this, 16? GOES 16. GOES 16 satellite. So here you can see on our conveniently edited little screen below, current weather conditions for when we're recording this. But this kind of gives you a little overview of what the satellite imagery does for us. And GO16 is like incredibly high resolution, beautiful, wonderful like this. So this is our continental whole section here. And then if we want to, we can even go in farther to just our local area. And you can see like localized to where we would look since we're in the Carolinas to uh, what we would see here before going out and chasing. So this is what yeah. is happening now. The great thing about having regional sectors or sub-regional sectors, mesoscale sectors, is the quality of what the satellite puts out now and the time frame that it yeah. can put it out is so much better nowadays so you can see the individual cells bubbling up and kind of get an idea yep. what's going on and instead of years ago when it was 15 or 30 minute chunks you know and the <laughs> chiseling pixels, it out every 30 minutes the pixels were about this big <laughs> this looks so much more realistic much improved <laughs> much improved way to go noah way to go <laughs> Another great thing that you can do looking at the satellite is see where the sunshine is poking through and where there's cloud cover. So where there's sunshine poking through, you have convection and you have a chance for storms. Where there's cloud cover, no sunlight, no storms. So this is what we use the, uh, the satellite here for mostly. It also has a bunch of really cool overlays on it. It's kind of a bit more scientific-y, so we're not going to go onto that layer <laughs> quite yet. If you guys want to see a video like that, leave us a comment below, but for right now, this is just one of the websites that we use. And one of the things about the satellite imagery is if you start off with a cloudy day, the forecast challenge is, is where's the clouds going to evaporate the earliest so that you can get that sunshine. Yep. Hence, go south. Always south. <laughs> the sun always shines in the south. She's always looking down south for the always. clouds to be evaporating first. She's always. like, get there, get there. Always. Most of the time I'm right. Not all the time though. Like the other day. <laughs> So the first thing we looked at was satellite. Second thing we look at is radar. So part of the current observation is going up to the National Weather Services site and looking at a national mosaic of the radar and seeing what's going on across the country. And then from there, we can drill down to our area of interest yep. to the local radars. Here we go. Here is the National Weather Services radar. Let's zoom into an area of interest. Let's zoom into Texas. Austin, where we've got Texas. Some some stuff going on there and on this website here you can actually do more overlays there's specific things that you can do not only with just the base image which would be your regular reflectivity images um, total precipitation yada 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 so it goes ahead and gives you the 
uh, current temperature for that area. It gives you the length of the National Weather Service office. It gives you the temperature trend and also the public weather forecast down below for the next seven days. Other great things that can be done with this is you can actually overlay the hazards, stuff like tornado warnings, flood warnings, and all the like. So it's a nice site to have your warnings and your radar at the same time. Very nice. As you can see, it's got a couple things going on here already. The next site that we use is called Tropical Tidbits, and it is a great site that's got a ton of different models. We use this for winter storms, hurricanes, tornadoes, just severe weather in general. It's got a wide variety from global to ensembles to hurricanes to mesoscale, all those types of models um, and climatological stuff as well, if you're interested in that. But what we look for specifically for severe weather and tornadoes during this season is the mesoscale models. One of the first models that we look at is the NAM model, which is the North American model. And here you can see we kind of have an overview of the entire US. Uh, we've got our region. So this is going through, this is going through your forecast. As you can see up here, it's got what time on which date. So you can see we're recording this right now. It's April 15th. Here, this is forecasting for April 17th. You can see it go throughout time. You can see all the forecasts it's got going on. We got snow, we've got low pressure systems, we've got this system here. And it's got another great feature, which is regions. For us, we're going to the southeast here. And in this region area here, you can see it's got a better resolution kind of thing. You can see more individual cells going on. We don't have much over in the Carolinas, but we do have a forecasted event here in the southeast, and you can kind of see, you know, we got a cell here, got a cell here, got a cell here. Uh, another thing that we can do is we can click on one of those, and it will request a model sounding or a, uh, a SQT log P diagram. And this is the forecasted one, of course. And uh, for those of you who are more sciencey and going to school for this, you may recognize what this is. For everybody else, we're not going to delve into it because it'd be incredibly boring, and you probably. <laughs> wouldn't want to watch it. <laughs> what I think is a really good feature is where you click on the radar, on, on the, uh, the model, it actually puts a little thumbnail image of where you clicked in the upper right hand corner. Yep. So you can see, well, what's the weather that it's forecasting for at that moment? And this is what the SKU-T log P diagram is looking like yep. for that time at that point. So that is really cool. Very cool feature here. On the side here, under Mesoscale, we can see there are a ton more models. Another one big in our area is the HRRR, which is the High Resolution Rapid Refresh Model. And same thing, it does what we just showed you with the NAM model, and then copy and paste for the rest of these. But that's a good tool to have as well for chasing. And We'll sit here and look at every single one and beat our head against the wall to see which one is right, <laughs> which right. one can do it. Now, the HRRR has let us down big time this season. What's so good about it is that it updates every hour and it takes in you know the satellite data, radar data, observation data, and every hour it's cranking out new forecasts. Yep. So you would think that if something is going on, would that it, it would, would initialize, <laughs> it would initialize with that kind of weather already going on, and it hasn't, and has completely failed us so far. How many so, times has there been like a thunderstorm in our backyard, and we look at the HR, and it's like, nope, nope, there's nothing there, and I'm like, I'm looking at it raining. Don't tell me it's not there. <laughs> Watch the cell build and move off to the east. And it's just blowing up into this thing, and hour after hour, the HRRR just completely, it's bone dry out, nothing to work, nothing to see here, yes. nothing to nothing see to here. See. <laughs> now, of course, our criticism of this model taken over the past two weeks of us chasing, so it's not always like that. Normally, no. it is the best model that we have found. It does very well, yes. Just the past two times, man, it's really gotten us, and we've got a chip on our shoulders because <laughs> of it. <laughs> But no, I mean, it depends on the model, depends on the situation, okay. yada yada. You'd have to, you know, test it out for your area to see which one works the best. But man, we feel betrayed by the high resolution rapid refresh. That's right. But if you guys are interested in some more of the details and getting into a deeper dive with these radars, or no, I'm sorry, with these models mm -hmm. and the dynamics to them and the reliability and biases, let us know. Definitely, we would love to do a part two or three or whatever, how many it takes to do all these models and stuff. 
All right, our next one that we want to look at is the Storm Prediction Center. So whenever you want to do some chasing SPC, they're your boys and girls. I mean, they are the SPC. people, they are the ones. This is their job 24 seven and this is what they specialize in. Yep. So they've got a great website out there. Fantastic they've website. got They've got like an overall, and just an overview of what's going on. Here's where the uh, warnings and watches are, are, are occurring. Uh, actually, it's more of the watches than they are the, yep. the warnings. The weather service takes care of the warnings. Mesoscale discussions, thunderstorm outlooks, fire weather stuff, it's all out there. They've got all the things and it's really cool. They've got forecasting tools that you can use. We won't dive deep into that today. That'll be for another time. But uh, they've got archives. You can look oh. at past weather events and oh. look at storms that occurred and see if things verified. They've got just a ton of stuff out there. So we definitely will be looking at day one, day two, day three convective yep. outlooks. And we actually do a deeper dive in one of our uh, blogs on yes, our we website yes, that we, we can do. link below there we go. Um, and uh, that gives you a lot more details but we look at these to kind of plan out hey we've got an area of interest here uh, looks like we're gonna have some storms and we need to keep an eye on this definitely and uh, so starting it off with the convective outlooks so this is just kind of a general overview of the US and which uh, which places are gonna be the hot spots for weather over the next couple days so the day one outlook is today, day two would be tomorrow, and day three is the day after that, and so forth. Uh, we do a day one, two, and three, and then we kind of clump together four through eight in kind of like a sporadic thing, because as you know, forecasting is difficult <laughs> and not always accurate. So instead of pinpointing things that far out in advance, they kind of just go like, eh, maybe over here, and then it gets more accurate as the days go. On the screen here currently, we can see we've got our day one outlook. We've got a little yellow spot over Texas, which was the storm system that we saw on the radar a moment ago. Day two, you can kind of see where the storm system progresses from Texas to over more towards the southeast and then now over Florida and Georgia and then for the day four outlook it kind of just runs through day four and day five and then day six but the potential is too low most of the time unless there's a huge event coming you'll most likely just see potential too low. Now when we see them putting stuff out there for day four we get really excited because you know it's going to be something. It's going to be a big one. <laughs> they're, they're, they're forecasting that far out that there's going to be an event. We get excited. Armageddon is happening. <laughs> Tornadoes left and right. Hail the size of your face will be falling from the sky. Oh boy. So definitely as we see day four, which transitions to day three, to day two, to day one, you'll see them hone in the forecast and it'll a lot of times get updated yep. you know because they'll have like low risk and then as the confidence builds it'll go to an enhanced risk and then a moderate risk and so then it, high it risk gets... and then everything explodes <laughs> <laughs> one of the last things we look at is an actual national weather service forecast office area and get down into the nitty-gritty with their forecast discussions and the things that are going on locally there so when you go ahead and click on the home page, it's got right there on the front, it'll have things like the current weather conditions. Some of them have a map of the severe weather outlook for the day. Each weather service office is a little bit different. They try to standardize what they display on the splash screen, which is the first screen that you show up on. So some of the things that you'll see is, again, the National Weather Service name, and then right below that you'll see the current hazards. And if you mouse over that, it has options underneath there. Um, next to that is the current conditions. And then next to that is the radar. And next to that is the forecast. There's where we can do our forecasters discussion and a few other things that are of interest to us for storm chasing. Next is rivers and lakes. And the, then there's the climate summaries and everything else there. So we look at the current conditions, we look at the radar, and we look at the forecast stuff. And that really helps us out for what's going on locally. Yep, yep, and, yep. And one good thing about that is like we talked about with the Storm Prediction Center, how they issued the watches, the National Weather Service forecast offices are the ones that actually issued the warnings. Yep. So they are the ones, the Weather Service divvies it up that way so that each local Weather Service office has that responsibility. They know that area very well and so they are best to forecast for that area 
and uh, spend their time warning the public on what's going to happen. Yes, so that's why they have warning responsibility and your forecasters will issue the warnings. So there you have it. There's a little look into all of the models and forecasting tools that we use before we go out chasing. And uh, if you guys want to check these out for yourself, I will link them all in the description below. Have no fear. If they seem overwhelming, they are still a bit overwhelming to us. So we know how to read them. <laughs> <laughs> and they're always putting something new out there. So always something else that always, you have to learn. <laughs> always something to learn. So I that's good. I the last one. <laughs> There we go. If you liked what you saw today, don't forget to leave a like below. It really helps us out. And while you're at it, don't forget to follow us over on Instagram and Facebook if you want to see more of our weather adventures. Until next time, I'm Kayla. And I'm Jim. Thanks for watching. And happy. Do we go north? Do we go south? This model? That model? Coin flip! <laughs>